Welcome to We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan citizen-based forum where we look at issues of interest to the Tri-Cities. First, I'd like to thank Tri-City Community TV for making this program possible. So before we get started, I'd also like to acknowledge that this program is taking place on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territories of the Coquitlam First Nations. We thank the Coquitlam people who continue to take care of these lands and all that is above and below. Today, we're talking to Matt Dijonlik, who is running for uh, the count, uh, one of the, the council seats in Coquitlam. That's right. right. I kind of <laughs> slaughtered that sort of at that, Matt. How I'm, are you? I'm are good. You? How have you been? Good. I'm good. 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 It's yeah. been a little while since we talked. Yeah. Um, Appreciate you having me back. Oh, more than welcome. Yeah. Um, so I think the first thing that we should do is we should, because this is different than last time we spoke, we should look at your background. Like, I, I'm going to... I'd like to know, I'd like you to tell me about your background, what, what yeah, your background Yeah, maybe is. I can start with some of my community involvement. Sure. Is, Absolutely. Um, so for the last eight years, I've been one of our library board trustees. Um, okay. It's been um, in that role, we, the board has worked with City Hall closely in terms of the governing, advocacy, budgeting of Coquitlam's library system. And uh, libraries have been something near and dear to my heart. It's, it's kind of how I, I started to kindle my passion for uh, local politics. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, I always bristle it when I hear people say, do we still need libraries in today's day and age? Because they really serve as these community centers, yeah. not just for books, but we do programming for kids, English language classes, study rooms. Uh, there's a gambit of programs that yeah. now operate out of the library. Yeah. So um, a lot of my time has been focused there. Um, how, how long have you been on there? So, sorry, I'm going to go I'm, back. I'm, well, I'm off I'm, now. I was on there for eight years. So eight years. Okay. Uh, from 2014 through up until when it became 2022. Yeah, because yeah. I sat on one of the, I didn't sit on the um, library boards, but I sat on one of the boards in Coquitlam, and um, there was a representative, I think it was the head of the library on that board, and you guys were involved in some really uh, progressive and exciting ideas, if I recall. <laughs> that Things like uh, the bus that travels Yes, which and we now we're going to be having a new book bus that's coming. So that bus, was something bus. that was yeah. really exciting because uh, with Coquitlam being such a, a large city and only two branches, yeah. what you find is that the further someone is away from a library, the less that they're likely to go. So to yeah. have a book bus that can actually go and service neighborhoods that might yeah. not have a library branch in their vicinity, it, it encourages literacy and youth. Yeah. It's it's such a great asset. So and if I recall, that was going up to Burke Mountain, was it not? Burke Mountain, Burkwitlam. Yeah. Um, yeah, those okay. were two of the main areas that yeah. it was focused in. Yeah, and, and that's excellent. Coming from a library and those kind of services to to kids and seniors and people. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. So sorry I interrupted about other community services. Yeah, I, I also it. was on our arts and culture committee for a little while. Uh, I mean, arts and culture being something I think that just adds so much vibrancy to our community. Um, so I spent two years on that. As um, I, sir, I was the library board's rep there, but we got to work with a variety of the other cultural groups, Evergreen Cultural Center, okay. Place des Arts, um, and with city staff around um, some of the work that we would do there, um, including I, I, and one of my first committee roles was around um, uh, being part of the panel that shows some of our artwork at the uh, Evergreen Line stations. Okay. Um, so the big frog. Why do I feel a... like you're pandering to me a little bit about art? <laughs> Stop that. Well, I'm a fan myself, <laughs> so it's just, uh, no, 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 we're, we're like-minded on that. Yeah. So, it's... So, so it sounds to me like, and listen, I really love this, is that, um, it, it, not that I'm cheering for Matt or anything, okay? But I hope Matt does all right. But I like the idea that you have experience with the city before you're running for mm -hmm. a city council mm -hmm. seat because I think that's really important. Totally, and even uh, someone coming with some background with it, it's still uh, the learning curve is, yeah. is going to be huge. Yeah. Um, Those are the know, places to learn, right? And these are great places to learn. And I think yeah. t touching on that too, um, one, one of the great things I really learned um, in my time at the library was also working with my fellow trustees. Right. And how do you forward agenda items? And that's very much what council is. Like, how do you right? forward what? How you forward items on an agenda or get okay. things done that you're trying to advocate for. Right. How do you deal with disagreement? Because, right. um, you know, I, I think... For anyone that's running for local government, even though we might have disagreements, there's that passion for community. And I think, yeah. um, you know, that passion sometimes can bring out strong feelings. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and sometimes you do deal with um, yeah. disagreements that can feel pretty pretty hot at times. And, and so you're going to have to deal with it. And that's good that we, it's, it's good that we talk about that because um, anybody who has watched any other um, We've Got Issues programs knows that that's a big concern mm -hmm. with our, with this program is mm -hmm. we want people to know that 
people in the community are watching that and that we need to cool the temperature and mm -hmm. be able to deal with the people's business mm -hmm. first. So I appreciate you bringing that well, up. Well, totally. And like, I mean, we, we've seen this year, we have fewer people running for local government positions across BC than we have in previous years. And I think one of the big contributing factors of that is just the toxicity you see on social yeah. media, yeah. the level of disagreement, and, and really that it's... Um, we've heard threats uh, to mayors. Threats to mayors. Which is crazy. Yeah, it's, um, it's it can be pretty intense. So. Right. Um, which, which is unfortunate because right. you know we, we want to be able to attract good people to run for public office. Yeah. So let me ask you. So and then I want to go to more to your um, agenda, the things that you want to see happen and mm -hmm. what you think is going on in Coquitlam. But what I want to ask first, because we've we've referenced, I think it was in maybe Maple Ridge that we mm -hmm. saw a mayor. Um, within the last couple of terms dealing with threats how do we cool that temperature and what can city councils do to both make sure that the public cools it and that they cool it with within council itself well i think i think it starts at the council table and it, it's not just a matter of um you know having a healthy workplace yeah. at council but also not inflaming tensions with stigmatizing language, violent language, and, and I think with, with Maple Ridge, and I, I remember that quite yeah. well, was yeah. um, during my time when I worked in, I, I worked in the housing ministry provincially during when um, uh, we were introducing a, a modular housing to Maple Ridge, and the, the level of um, stigmatizing of, of rhetoric towards people that were unhoused was so troubling, so heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, and to see politicians then pandering to that was fr frankly horrifying. Right. And that is exactly where we, we as counselors, even if we might disagree with something, even if concerns, Let, to can, not be doing that is yeah, so, yeah. so critical. Yeah. And, and I just want to clarify what, what you said. When people are pandering to that, it's what you, what, and these are my words, they're stoking the flames of that. Absolutely. Right. And that has to stop. It's one thing to address someone who might have valid concerns. Yeah. Um, but to jump in on the rhetoric that, well, frankly, I saw it was violent. Yeah. Um, horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying, heartbreaking to see, uh, because we were talking about some of the most marginalized people in that example. Yeah. And it was it was just disgusting to watch, and it created a level of um, the you know the political, you know I don't want to comment too much on other municipalities, yeah. but well, it, it was quite toxic out yeah, there. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and I to be fair, I'm the one who brought this up. So, I, and I would hope maybe one day that we can have a conversation like this mm -hmm. about that as an entire subject of its oh, own. Yeah. But maybe what we should do is go on to your um, to the things that that are good about Coquitlam that you want to see yeah, going forward um, and the things and that you also are find are um, that you'd like to address. Well, yeah, and, and this is where like I, I see a lot of exciting opportunity for Coquitlam. We are, we're a big city uh, geographically. We're in the center of the lower mainland and with that is coming, you know, the challenges of we have a lot of young families that are moving out from Vancouver and Burnaby because of affordability issues. Mm -hmm. We also know that we have a lot of newcomers coming from countries all over the world because Coquitlam is seen as um, a very tolerant, multicultural community. And, and these are great things we're celebrating, but it also means that we have to stay on top of some of our community planning. And, and one of the things that I've, I've really pushed for is the idea of just having complete communities. So not just the housing that meets people's needs, which is so important, the, the three bedroom townhouses for young families, more purpose-built rental, would love to see more co-op options. Seniors rental, I think, is gonna be very important coming up, especially in some of our older neighborhoods but also to make sure we're putting in place the rec centers, the future school space, um, transit investments, and transit being not just SkyTrain that we now have, but uh, the rapid bus routes that are gonna be able to get people to SkyTrain, the active transportation models. Um, I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more people using e-bikes in the future now as this, that model of transportation becomes just cheaper. Um, we're gonna see more of it where it's, it's the supply that can't keep up with demand. And, yeah. and even just thinking about how do we create walkable neighborhoods too. Um, I know TransLink is really starting to take this lens of, you know, when we're planning a neighborhood, to think about how does someone walk from their front door to a model of transit, um, to SkyTrain, and being able to think about all of this together. And those are some of the things I really want to prioritize. Um, because for, for a long time, with a lot of cities, we've focused a lot on, you know, we do the development for the housing, and then we, we often try to figure out the other pieces later. And this creates 
long legs, uh, long legs to um, actually getting amenities in neighborhoods. And we, we've had some of these struggles in Coquitlam. Um, we're, we're, we're playing catch up, and I think I'm mean, gonna give kudos to council, and I think they're recognizing this, and they're starting to be a lot more, um, there's a lot more um, planning ahead. Razor Mills, for example, putting aside the land for a school and community center, I think was a great decision. But also thinking about how, you know, as the city does develop, um, as neighborhoods redevelop, what amenity spaces are we putting in? How are we dealing with transit? How are we dealing with making sure that we still have the housing that people can actually live in? Um, those are really the priorities that I'm looking to um, push for at City Hall. Yeah, mostly around housing, mostly around livability. Well, I, th I think they, they're so tied together. And I think with, with, with everything in the city, it's, it's such an ecosystem where mm -hmm. each piece can play off each other. Um, yeah. I, th I think that's a really important word. It's an ecosystem mm -hmm. because um, I'm a little bit older than you. Uh, and I have watched, I have watched when I was probably, well, a little bit younger than you, I've watched the period of time where we went from more walkable cities where we had more mom pa shops mm -hmm. to a big box environment. Mm -hmm. And I think right now we're feeling a little bit of the pain of that big box. And if I'm not mistaken, we're starting to watch that era break up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, I'm hearing people talking about creating places where where we can live and shop and play mm -hmm. and recreate all in the same place. I guess play and recreate are the same word. <laughs> yeah, is like having that complete community, really. Yeah. And it, it is something where, you know, we look at Austin Heights, for example, where you have this amazing BIA that does such great advocacy work for a lot of the mom and pop stores. Yeah. Um, I would love to see that kind of model replicated in other parts of our community. Like when I think about Town Center, it would be amazing to have a business improvement association to be able to advocate for what the business needs are in the community to be able to attract more mom and pop stores especially as that area does become more dense and really is our city center yeah. well that place um, is built for that is it not well exactly it, it is and as you know one of the big opportunities i see and it's still quite a ways off but you know one day we're going to redevelop them all and and what is that going to mean is it just going to be luxury condos? Or are we going to create a really vibrant community that could have mm -hmm. commercial space, office space, local jobs, um, the transit pieces, park space, which is something like just as the city densifies, we need park space. It's, mm -hmm. It is, I think, coming out of the pandemic, more people working from home and more of people just having discovered the gems that we have in our backyard. Yeah. We are seeing an explosion of use in our green space. Yeah. And so it's not just about investing in the current green space we have, but how do we actually create new park space? is yeah. going to be so critical for well, the that city. should be that should that's has to be a front and center mm -hmm. um issue for all councils when we consider right here in the tri-cities what happened in balcara mm -hmm. how how that that area when we went to a new model of parking has become it was oversubscribed it was difficult and now all of a sudden fewer people get into that area which mm -hmm. is you know less hard on the environment, but it shows you the demand. Mm -hmm. there, and as our population grows, we still only seem to have the same amount of park space. We're gonna mm -hmm. have to grow that well, somehow. And I, I think this is where uh, some of the investments that the provincial government's doing in Pinecote Burke is gonna be huge, to be able to access like some of that site better for hiking, for camping. Right. Um, we have some real amazing regional parks yeah. right on Coquitlam's doorstep that if you talk to most people, they don't realize. Yeah. Just like what is here. Uh, yeah. Minicata, a little, people know Minicata a little more so, but um, those spaces and utilizing them, um, not in a way that they end up oversubscribed, but just being able to access them is going to be important. Yeah, um, we're going to have to. Yep. We're, we're going to have to. Mm -hmm. And then wherever we have opportunities. Okay, so um, I'm, 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 Wondering what other areas in your um, in your platform we should we should talk about. Have we covered everything already, or no? I, something I mean, else? We, that you <laughs> there's lots we can talk. I mean, mental health care is something near and dear for me. It's something I, I had a little bit of work experience in on the, on the provincial government when I worked in the mental health ministry. Right. The, the Riverview lands um, uh, so important. Uh, Semiquela, um, as it's been renamed. Um, yeah. Uh, the Great Blue Heron it was a quick Whitlam. Um, so that lands I see too. Amazing opportunities for uh, reconciliation with Quake Whitlam First Nation, as well as doing some state of the art mental health care, working with the provincial government on that. I mean, we have 250 acres of, of land there where we can do new hospitals 
as well as still preserving some of the incredible green space and park space that we have there. Mm -hmm. and, and what I really love, and I think Coquitlam residents should be so proud of this, is we have one of the, we have one of the few communities, I think, that would say, you know, we have this in our backyard, please let's do mental health care here. Please let's do some of the complex care here. We want to take this on as a community because we know that there are so many people in the lower mainland that need it. I mean, we have so many people in downtown east side that are gonna need not just housing, but complex care housing with medical supports. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the things I found that, that, that I was quite shocked to discover was just the, you know, we're getting a lot better at uh, resuscitating people that have overdosed, but you can only overdose so many times before you're dealing with permanent brain injuries. And, mm -hmm. and we have a population that is unfortunately dealing with that who might never be able to fully recover. And so how could we utilize these lands for, for healing, for, for care of people who, who really need it? Mm -hmm. um, and, and what an opportunity that is. And, and I, think, I think too, like what the Coquitlam residents should, be, should have pride in how, uh, how eager we are to take on that work as a community and, mm -hmm. and have that here. So provides jobs for the future, mm -hmm. gives an opportunity to make partnerships with the colleges and universities, universities that are right on our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a, that's a, it's excellent to talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's an, an arboretum mm -hmm. as well. The mm -hmm. trees are spectacular there. And mm -hmm. I think um, if you don't mind me using your time to promote the idea that there are, there is a society that takes people on tree walks there yep. quite often. And I, Highly recommend that to people to go. Been and see. on many tree walks with the, the Hort Society, yeah. and uh, I highly recommend it to people as well. It is. It, it, uh, it's a. It is an, in its own way a park that people don't know. And check out the community gardens is the uh, other thing. And I always right. say to people. Like, that's right. The history there is spectacular, yeah. and it provides a great place for the movie industry as well. So it, it brings. Yes, it's quite the sight when you go by there in the summer, and all of a sudden it's winter and snowing, and yeah. there's a, been a car explosion, and you're wondering where do, where, where have I gone? Yeah. <laughs> so I understand that later on you have a an appointment to keep with um, with debates. So I can't. I should, yes. probably should wrap this up. Um, I want to thank you for coming in to We've Got Issues. Well, thank you. Talking about this with 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 me and. Uh, Good luck on your run. I appreciate it. I expect that you'll probably do very well. You've got great experience, and I appreciate you running. Well, thank you. Thanks, really Matt. appreciate it. Appreciate All it. All the best. Okay, thanks for being here. This is We've Got Issues. I'm Brad Nickerson. Thank you for watching.